everybody. Um, I'm Greg Young. Uh, I maintain several OS2 programs, including FM2 and LSwitcher, and also EFTE, which someday maybe I'll even release to everybody else. <coughs> my topic today is uh, basically it's broken, but it's not my fault. Most of the time when things are broken, it is my fault. So this is a few of the exceptions. Um, had a little problem. One day FM2 Play, which is how we do the music part of um, FM2, it just calls it. And I hadn't done anything with it. And one day, all of a sudden, it starts trying to play executable files and text files and all kinds of bizarre things. And it's like, I hadn't done anything. I knew I hadn't done anything. And so I'm going back through the code. I rebuilt, I rebuilt all the change sets between the one that I first put it in and that nothing different happened. Couldn't figure it out. It's like, where did this come from? Okay, back to something else. Remember when you installed the Rex plugin on X Center, and suddenly every time you tried to hit F1 on PMC, it blew up. It's been eight or ten years since that happened, probably. But again, nothing had happened to PMC because obviously I had no idea it was the Rex plugin when I first saw it, and nobody even had the source to PMC. PMC, so couldn't be that. But then there's a couple other utilities like that, which are dialog boxes, and it happened with them. Okay, it turns out that in Rex plugin, there's a help hook, which is a global hook. And basically what it was doing was it was hooking that, F that F1 call to PMC. But you couldn't see what had happened, it just blew up. Of course, I thought it was the X Center finally because if I closed X Center, it worked, and if X Center was opened, even with the Rex plugin not installed, it didn't work. Of course, I also didn't know that it loads all the DDLs in the plugin directory, not just the ones that are installed. <coughs> that's what we say here. Um, but then I tried it on my maintenance position partition, which has X Center installed, but doesn't have any of the Rex plugins. And again, it worked. So how do you solve these sorts of things? Well, yeah, I knew what was wrong. I knew it had something to do with the Rex plugins. But I knew nothing about Rex plugin or about X, work, X Center plugins. I had looked through the code, and the thing that I noticed in it was this global help hook. I couldn't quite figure out why it was there. So, as, as is always true of these situations, um, dumb luck is always the best way. And I simply removed the help hook, and two things. The problem went away in PMZ, and nothing that I could ever identify happened to the Rex plugin. All of its help worked everywhere. So, no idea. Okay, what does this have to do with my problem with FM2 Play? Okay, like you said, the obvious problem was me, that I had done something crazy. Huh? Oh. Could we have that train turned off? Yeah. <laughs> well, we could ask Deutsche Bahn to temporarily remove the about 12 railway tracks outside here, but... <laughs> okay. But then what I discovered was on a fresh install of ECS, the problem went away. And so I started wondering, what's the difference between my fresh install of ECS 
and my current production install. Well, it finally dawned on me that the only thing that was different that would affect MMOS2 was that I had installed the MP3 plugin. And guess what? I got the source to the plugin, and the older lib from Unix, which was used to build it, had strictly interpreted the um, MP3 protocols to check to see if a file was an MP3. Well, that meant that it checked to make sure that certain space that was supposed to be reserved was really reserved, that there was nothing in it. And the truth is, is that most people who make MP3s use that space for something even though they're not supposed to. So, had they used the check, most MP3s wouldn't have played on OS2 because it would have told them that a lot of things that were MP3s weren't because of this reserved space. So their solution was it would tell them that it could play anything, including EXE files and text files and everything under the sun. Fortunately, the latest Mad Lib, which is the MP3 lib, relaxed the ID protocol. They, t they ignored all of that supposedly reserved space. So I simply put the check back in and recompiled with the new lib, and my problem went away. <laughs> I still took FM2 play out of the FM2 because it was just too annoying and to try to get everybody to change their MP3 lib or get everybody to even know that that's what the problem is didn't seem worth it. But So if you'd like a copy of the fixed MP3 lib, ask me. I've got it with me. I haven't, I'm going to put it up on Hobbs probably next weekend. But and of course, nothing like this could ever possibly happen again, could it? Well, yes, it did. Um, I maintain L Switcher. And interesting, the last beta that, and now the, person, the original author's name escapes me. You shouldn't try to do this at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I've got a question. Yeah. How many people know what L Switcher is? Okay, L-Switcher is a uh, task switcher. It has a um, standalone program that re basically replaces the Windows list. It's not a replacement in the sense that you've got some placements. In other words, it doesn't replace the object, but it, it does the exact same thing. And also there's uh, an X-Center plugin that replaces the files plugin. <coughs> Um, it's, um, what they'd done in the last beta of the program before I took it over was tried to write code so that when a program was restored, rather than restoring it to the current desktop that you were on, it attempted to restore it to the desktop that it had been minimized on, whichever of those virtual desktops it was, and then would switch you back to the virtual desktop. Sounds like a wonderful idea, doesn't it? Well, the real mystery of this was I kept getting reports that anybody who was using sticky windows with Pager, the sticky windows didn't work anymore. I'm thinking, well, what does that have to do with L-Switcher? Doesn't make any sense. And the other thing that I help would notice is if, the po if FM2 crashed, or even sometimes when I rebooted with Control-Alt-Delete instead of Shutdown, when it came back up, something like FM2 that was supposed to be in the base window would be gone. I mean, I could see on the task manager that it was open, but I couldn't see it anywhere. And if you hit Move, I would either pull it up from below or from the left. Now, that didn't sound too strange until you start thinking about it. That means that its position was recorded as negative. Yeah. And 
not a good thing <laughs> to have negative positions, since I'm guessing that the position code uses a, either a U short or a U long for the pixel locations. <clears throat> Okay, I fixed it. It took me a while to figure out what had been done and where the code was that had done it, but it hasn't been released either, but it is fixed. And interestingly, if you remember Object Desktop, you could actually set which virtual desk you wanted something to open on. So theoretically, what this attempted to do must be possible but I haven't figured out yet, and that's why I'm going to keep the code for the moment and see if I can figure out. Because the other problem I had with the code is in some circumstances, it would put the program back just weird places, the wrong desktop, lots of things. So there's something more to that code than would really meet the eye. Because you have to think about all of these things. <clears throat> I have another problem that... Do, does everybody on ECS 2.2 have to um, reset the desktop if they put an icon on a, um, install, install an icon for an object, for a program object? What happens with mine is if I open settings, I lose the icon. And oftentimes, workplace shell blows up. And I haven't figured out if it's L-switch or not. Yeah, if you open the properties, if I make if I make a brand new object, and this is what I was doing is making a Java object and adding an icon into it as part of the process of making that. Right. And in other words, it's being auto done by FM2, not by me just going out and physically do it. And then if I would then go and open properties, the icon would vanish. And like I said, I had some other workplace shell problems. Okay, so you're not doing it. Right. Okay. And nothing, nothing I could find, no call I could find, would make it so that I couldn't, could keep that icon if I opened properties unless I had reset the desktop. I don't have that problem with that just doing it with the workplace shell. Yeah. I, I don't, but I have had occurrences when I have put an icon in there and it doesn't seem to be displayed. If you click on the icon to edit it, Yeah. So that's another odd thing that's going on that I'm going to have to look into to figure out if it's really workplace shell. Okay. How does it work? Well, the OS2 desktop is huge, basically. A lot bigger than anybody's screen it's ever going to be. That's what makes it possible for us to have virtual desktops. Yeah, and I'm not sure how big it is because it depends on what the variable is that holds the data. It's just, it's as large as whatever that variable is. Um, <clears throat> and then, ever wonder why, all of, why you always switch back to the base desktop and you pull all the programs onto it when you shut down? It's so you record a location, so the final location that you record is some place that OS2 actually understands it. That's why all those windows were going everywhere, is because it was, it was now shutting down things, but the data that was stored on those minimized programs was data that was out some place that wasn't really on the base screen. It was, you know, to the right of the screen, above it, things like that. So that was, that's why they all come back on. And so this attempt by L-Switcher to put those programs out in that much bigger desktop was not workable. Or at least I can't figure out how to make it work. And like I said, since Object Desktop managed to do it, there's got to be a way to do it. Huh? Pardon? Uh, I can look at it. Sounds like a possibility. Okay, so what happened with sticky windows? Well, I figured out that sticky windows 
in all likelihood, I haven't looked at the code, but in all likelihood, the way that it works is to use that very feature. What it does is as you switch from one window to the next, if it's open, if the program that's sticky is open somewhere on the screen, as part of that switch, what Pager does is minimize it and then re-enlarge it after the switch, which means it will then appear on the desktop you're now on because the minimized one gets, well, what do you think that that L switcher ch change did the sticky windows? Uh, are you talking about sticky windows as a separate program? No, sticky, it's, sticky, it's, it's, as, it's okay. as part of the option in yeah. Pager yeah. Where, where basically you can, for those who don't know what sticky windows are, it just means that if I have a little program that I want to have on every desktop automatically, like a clock or something like that, um, that I just, within Pager, label that particular thing as sticky. Yeah. And so it always appears. But like I said, what, what I believe is they're doing is using this, the fact that if you minimize a program and then restore it, it restores to whatever desktop you are on. So now that I've got it, got a program that's trying to restore it someplace else, um, let's say confusion reigns supreme. Those programs were just vanishing. Again, you'd have to, you'd have to go out. You could, you could see that they were there. If you moved them, you could pull them in from somewhere, but it was not predictable at all where they were going to come from. And part of the time, they'd end up straddling two virtual desktops, which is a little strange looking at half of a program. The obvious workaround was to be able to identify sticky windows and simply don't do this. In other words, don't try to save that data as to where they were on a virtual disk desktop. Just let them have the natural behavior. Okay, so that didn't work. Uh, there's no public interface to query it. I tried. But now I'd have to rewrite X Center to export that function so that I could actually query to see if a window was sticky or not. Um, and then need to add a bunch of code to maintain backward compatibility because not everybody is going to upgrade X Center to the latest code, assuming anybody ever builds it again and releases it. <coughs> I guess they did recently. Okay. <coughs> Probably the store, best part of the story is if you have something suddenly break, suddenly is not behaving the way it is, figure out what you changed and do it then. Don't say, oh, I'll do this a week from now. Because the problem with particularly the MP3 one is I had probably done the MP3 one months before and I had seen this FM2 play behavior and I just kept saying, uh, it's, I'm just crazy and you know, I'd have something else that I needed to do. And that's how I got to the point that it never even occurred to me that I had made that change. Had I really, had I really thought about it a couple of days after I'd installed the MP3 player, I would have figured out that it's got to be the MP3 player that is causing this odd behavior. And basically, always suspect other software. It can't possibly be me. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> Thanks. Any questions? <laughs>